Mm -hmm. uh, Luke 2, verse 40, And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit, mm -hmm. filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. <laughs> now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. Uh. And when he was twelve years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. <laughs> And when they fulfilled the days, as they returned, the child Jesus tarried behind in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And Joseph and his mother knew not of it. But they, supposing him to have been in the company, went a day's journey, and they sought him among their kinsfolk and acquaintance. And when they found him not, they turned back again to Jerusalem, seeking him. And it came to pass that after three days they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, uh -huh. both hearing them and asking them questions. Oh, he was sitting in the middle of all those doctors. Mm. Mm. And all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. <laughs> and when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou de thus dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. Oh. <laughs> and he said unto them, How is it that ye sought me? Wist ye not that I must be about my father's business? <laughs> and they understood not the saying which he spake unto them. <laughs> And uh, this Jesus, mm -hmm. that at twelve years old was sitting with all the doctors and asking them questions and hearing them, and <laughs> seemed that he had an above average intelligence. Yes. Now, why that is, it could be that his father was God. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then he had an earthly father named Joseph. <laughs> Now, I think this raising of children, yes, the education they receive, right. <laughs> My sons, they probably will be like Jesus in that you're going to pay for their education so that when they're adults, yes, I'm going to give them some assets. And then you'll ask why it is that they have so little grace with those that are corrupt. <laughs> now, I know you're sitting there saying this cannot happen. <laughs> but when I go to looking at the WACs and the civil rights manual that is given to every civil rights coordinator in all school districts, yes, they said they had no jurisdiction to enforce fraud laws. Pooch. They had no jurisdiction to enforce child abduction laws. Yes. They did not have any jurisdiction to enforce kidnapping laws. Po, po, po. Now, Zachary is a sophomore. That's what the newspaper says and is going to be uh, 17 in a couple days from now. Yeah. Does anybody know the actual date? Hang on just for a second. Simple date calculator. Yes. Uh, today is the 15th. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Zachary is going to be 17 tomorrow, and I, I would think that he'd like to have me as his father. Yes. He would like to have me today so I can be there tomorrow for his birthday. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now that's one day from now. Do you want to do a date calculation? Pooch. Mm. Well, today's date is January 15th of 2019. Mm -hmm. Let's say I'm right about all this and you intentionally had me arrested for a crime I didn't commit in Brennan, Washington so that the football coach and his wife could... Uh, trap my sons into playing sports yes because of my genetics yeah being their biological father <laughs> and it turned into this huge snafu of winning games because of the use of students that should be playing athletics against those that are two grades ahead of where they are at <laughs> And I sue the Brennan School District. I sue the state of Washington. I sue every state of the United States of America for knowingly using students that are in the wrong grades. Yes, because my wife got a teaching certificate, mm -hmm. arranged to move to Brennan, Washington. Yeah, relocated them and had it ab 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 abducted them mm -hmm. because of my own genetics. <laughs> Now, when we look at this, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
I said I was going to appeal the court decisions at the Supreme Court of the United States. Yes. And uh, there was some time until... Ooh, ooh, ooh. Now, um, I'm not expecting to die for another 71 years, 159 days, and 14 hours. Yes. And as a father, I wouldn't expect my sons to die before I do. Yes. They might live a little longer than I do. Yeah. So we won't be playing into the world today, will we now? No. And then there's that 2,000 year celebration and that I'd like to get going about eight years, 171 days from now. Yeah. Um, I myself am not planning on participating in it until about uh, 2033 for those in the family. <coughs> I like to get something going. Yeah. And then step in maybe six years later. Aha. Uh Aha. -huh, uh -huh. So that I'm going to be preaching as a revivalist to the masses, the millions upon millions upon millions. Yeah. I have had the experience of the uh, stepping into the omniscience of God and laying hands on the sick and seeing them healed. Yes. I'm one of these signs and wonders revivalists. Yeah. But I really won't come into my own anointing until about 2033 where I get rid of all the dogs in the population. <laughs> Then we have one of those real revivals. I spent a lot of my Christian life studying revivalists. Mm. Jonathan Edwards, the great awakening of the United States of America. Yeah. I really did, well, admire Smith Wigglesworth. Yes, yes, yes. And the thought of me spending my trillions yes. on a global worldwide celebration of Jesus as a fan of Jesus, of course. And then preaching to billions of persons from the time that I'm, well, 2033. Yeah. About the time I'm 63 to 65 years old, when I really get going. Some preachers really don't come into their anointing until their mid-60s, till their 80s. <laughs> Why that is, I don't know.